So here we have a problem in which we have a wagon, a railway wagon or something. It's moving along with some speed VW. It has mass MW. And at the same time, there's this rock falling down from the sky, and it, and it miraculously lands right into the wagon. As the rock hits the wagon, as I said, it lands right in the wagon. It bounces around the wagon perhaps a little bit, certainly hits the bottom, maybe bumps into both walls. Who knows exactly what happens? It tumbles. And then finally becomes... To, comes to rest inside the wagon. They start the rat, the wagon and the rock start moving as one. And after they start moving as one, the things are moving with a a speed vt. So what are we given in this problem? We're given the mass of the rock, the mass of the wagon. We're given the speed of the rock just before it hits the wagon, and we're given the speed of the wagon. The rock by the way is falling vertically downward. The wagon is going horizontally from left to right in this picture. So we're given these things, but what we want to do is we want to find the speed of them together after the rock becomes settled inside the wagon. And we're going to assume there's no friction between the rails and the, and the wagon itself. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is draw a couple free body diagrams. And we know by now that what we do on these free body diagrams is draw our forces acting on this thing. So for the wagon, I have the weight of the wagon acting down on it. I've got a normal force of the rails pushing back up on the wagon. And I have a force on the wagon due to the rock. And this is probably pretty crazy force and crazy in the sense that it's really hard to quantify. And then for the rock, I have uh, the weight of the rock, M MR times G, again in the minus J hat direction. I and J are horizontal and vertical as always. And uh, I also have the force on the rock due to the wagon right here, which I indicate by the lowercase f. Now, I do not need to write a mass acceleration diagram because I'm not going to use a Newton's second law directly. In other words, I'm not going to have accelerations that I'm going to solve for and then integrate. Instead of what I'll do is I'll just dive into the impulse momentum principle. Now, in the impulse momentum principle, we define times, right? There's a time at which we start at, which we have momentum at the beginning, and then there's a time at the end, and we have an impulse uh, that we calculate by, by integrating between the two times. So I'm going to define time one to be the time just before the rock impacts the cart. And I'm going to let time two be the time just after the rock settles in the wagon. What I mean is this, that's be the time when it stops rolling around or sliding around inside that wagon. So in writing this impulse momentum principle, we start with the momentum of the system. So we have mass of the wagon times the velocity of the wagon. It's a VW in the I hat direction. And then we have mass of the rock times velocity of the rock. Velocity of the rock is VR in the minus J hat direction. And I'm looking at an error right now. So this is in the minus J hat direction. So there's my initial momentum. And then I have to add to that an integral, the impulse, right? From time one to time two. What you do is you add up all your external forces integrate them with respect to time. And this has to equal your momentum of your system uh, once things settle down or at time two. And after things are settled down, both the wagon and the rock are moving together. So I've got an M wagon plus M rock. I've got two things. There's their total mass. They have speed VT and that velocity is going in the I hat direction. Now again, the neat thing about the impulse momentum principle for a system of particles or, for, or a system of bodies is that it's, it's just the external forces that create an impulse which change the momentum of the system. The internal forces don't affect the momentum of the system. So let's think about what the external forces are. They're the forces from, coming from outside the system. So for example, I have a weight acting on the cart, right? That's a force coming from the earth that's outside my system of the cart and the rock. I have a normal force. This is coming from the rails. I have the weight of the rock, right? Again, this is coming from outside. The internal forces are these lowercase f forces right there. But in this impulse right here, it's just these ones that I've circled that appear. And you'll notice something rather interesting. All these external forces are for this problem in the j-hat direction. So all these are going up or down. None of them are going left and right. Aha! And that's really the key to the whole problem. 
because remember the impulse momentum principle is a vector principle. It gives you a vector relationship. In order for this vector to equal that vector, its horizontal components must be equal to each other and their vertical components must be equal to each other. But guess what? What do we want? We just want this piece. This is a horizontal piece. So let's just look at the I component of this equation and what do we get? If we look at the initial momentum, then the only piece in the I direction is this piece right here, MWVW, which I got right there. This part is in the J hat direction, so it's not in the I. This part is all in the J, none of it's in the I. So I just get to go ahead and say that this is equal to this piece over here, which is all in the I. Yeah, so what I'm saying is here that the momentum in the I hat direction or momentum in the horizontal direction is conserved. Here's the momentum in the horizontal direction before impact. Here's the momentum of the system in the I hat direction or the horizontal direction after the rock is settled and they're both moving together. And now it's super easy to solve for VT. And when I do so, here's what I get. Now before com being completely satisfied with my answer, I should uh, just check some units real quick. So what we have on the right hand side is a mass divided by a mass plus a mass and multiplied by VW here. That's a length over time. That's the speed, right? And notice that uh, mass plus a mass is a mass and that cancels with the mass on the top. So this is a, a length over time. And what we want VT is supposed to be a speed, right? So that's a length over time. So we're cool. Units are good. I think I'm happy with the answer. One more thing we can check real quick. So what happened to the speed? It came in, the wagon came in at a speed VW. It came out at a speed VT and the relationship or the ratio of VT over VW is this guy right here. And notice that the numerator is smaller than the denominator, right? Masses are always positive. So I got MW in the, in the top and I've got MW plus MR. So the bottom is bigger than the top. So therefore, this fraction is going to be less than one. So after the rock falls into this thing, it's going to slow it down. Now, it's kind of neat because we just did this thing and, and the, the, the rock rolling around inside that wagon could be a very complicated phenomenon, right? They think it, these two objects can really smash into each other. They can slide around. There can be lots of friction. Uh, little pieces of rock might even break off, um, but it doesn't matter. It's the momentum that's conserved that matters, and be just using that, we didn't have to worry about any of the details of these forces. Just using the fact that the momentum in the horizontal direction is conserved allows us to solve for the velocity after everything's settled down. That's really quick, slick. That's really powerful.